Today, we will be covering vendor entry, part of the accounts payable cycle within PSL Plus. Select accounts payable on the left-hand side. Then select vendor. Now select vendor entry. Once this has been selected, a window will appear. The vendor entry window has three required fields that must be filled out. This is vendor ID, vendor name, and W9 on file. When adding a new vendor to the system, simply select add up at the top. It is signified as a blue plus sign or press F4 on your keyboard. A vendor number will automatically be assigned. If you need another vendor number, whether that be alphanumeric or numeric, you may enter that in before pressing the add key. Now we will enter our vendor. It is advised to do the uncommon name before the common name, followed by a slash. In this case, I will be adding John Smith. Smith slash John. This slash is found above your enter key and below your backspace key. This will print on the check as John Smith, so no worries. The reason for this is for easy searching, which we will show later in this video. Moving forward, we have our other informational fields for vendor information that consists of address, line one, address, line two, city, state, zip code, as well as country. You may also put in the contact information. This simply is for the name of the contact at the vendor. We also have phone number for the vendor, fax for the vendor, as well as email and card number. The bottom areas are for EFT information. To enter in your EFT sort code, account number, high value EFT, as well as your automatic clearing house, ACH routing, and ACH account number. Remember to fill out these fields if the vendor is being paid via ACH or EFT. The account type signifies what type of EFT account is this, checking or savings. If it is checking, press C. If it is savings, press S. Next, we have the TIN tax identification number information. Here, if the name differs in any way from the vendor information, you may enter this for US tax purposes. In this case, I will type in John Smith. You may also enter the tax ID, whether it be EIN or social security number. Then we have the TIN type. This is the tax identification type of business here. If you want to see the results, right click in this field and you will see a pick list of options to identify this vendor's tax identification type. Here you have five options. We will select for our example today, not a 1099-able vendor. If there was a 1099-able vendor and we need to select the appropriate tax coding, we may do so in the 1099 box. Simply right click in this field to receive a pick list of 1099 box options. We'll say that this is non-employee compensation for our example today. W9 on file. This is used to signify whether we have the US government W9 for this vendor. If we have it, simply press Y for yes. And if we do not have it, press N for no. This is our only other required field for vendor other than name and vendor ID. We have the work state to notate where this vendor was delivering goods and services. We will say California. Terms. This allows us to establish our terms with the vendor. In this case, we have a net 15 agreement, being that our invoices with this vendor are due for payment 15 days after the bill has been received. Once I put this in, at any point when I go ahead and process a payment for this vendor, it will automatically notate the due date as 15 days from entry date. Other information, we have comment. If you have any special comment about the vendor that needs to be listed in this area, you may go ahead and enter it here, such as paid via check only. Studio vendor number. If your studio requires to number the vendor in any other different way, please go ahead and notate that here. Vendor type. If this is fillable, you may be able to notate your vendor as either a trade vendor or a payee vendor. 
In order to issue this individual petty cash, we must select the petty cash box. This will unlock the PC advanced account. In order to issue any petty cash through the petty cash module of PSL, you must assign a PC advanced account and must create the receiver of petty cash as a vendor. We also have P card. This is the same process. If we wish to issue any payments or track any reimbursements through a purchase card for this vendor, we must enter that in here. If this vendor is paid via ACH or EFT, you must select this checkbox here. Customer number signifies our customer account number with the vendor, purely informational, but useful for keeping track of what your customer number may be with any specific vendor. Merchant only will signify that this is a merchant only vendor, being that no large expenses are paid to this vendor. An example would be something like a small hardware store under $50 in purchase. Inactivity flag, do not click this. Once you're done with your vendor entry, come to the top of your screen and hit accept to save your entry.